All right, you bunch of yahoos, strap yourselves in for another episode of Dan and Don's Toxic Masculinity. In other words, shut up, sit up, and pay attention. Have you been having some good good days these last few days? or No, the weather's beating me up, boy. Oh. You're torturing me. How are you? Well, no, other than uh, you know, my sinuses are wreaking a little bit of havoc on me. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Mm. Uh, you don't yeah. get any rain up there? Yeah, no, it's 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 raining. It's uh, it, it I'll say that that was kind of like the novelty, just to have a couple of nice days where it was actually raining. That, that where you saw it, just you know, you could see it all coming on down. It's like going. It was like a, a nice day to simply just flop on the couch and do nothing. <laughs> you pulled that off. Well, you know, for at least a couple hours. Yeah, yeah for at least a couple hours couple of different naps, maybe a couple extra movies, all uh, back to back to back. Your uh, telephone finger got itchy. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, it did, but it's kind of like going, you know, it, it uh, life still kind of went out somehow. It just uh, it didn't didn't seem to phase. It just, you know, life went on. I'll, I'll say that, uh, yeah, I was a little bit under, under the weather uh, as well, but uh, this combination of, you know, I think we, we talked about that on, the, on the, one of the last episodes where we talked a little bit about, uh, uh, you know, having one of those indignities that happen when you hit about 50 uh, some years of age and I let my kind of go. So when you get, go in there and have the, one of these, what I re- refer to as a, as a total violation, you know, you of my bodily, bodily, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Again? Oh. Well, no, 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 no. Just, <laughs> you know, I'll simply this after all the tests and stuff like that, that is kind of like going, well, you're good for another decade. I'm thinking, yeah. okay, yeah, all righty. Yeah, I'll mark that down on my calendar. Yeah. 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 <laughs> some of the, some of these, I'll just say some of the indignities that uh, um, you're supposed to do, you're supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah. And who says you're supposed? Who are they that says you're supposed to do these things? Well, same people came up with a COVID um, antibiotic. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah well, right? I don't know. I, I think there's certain things that you're supposed to, as one becomes more and more that mature adult, you know, you're supposed to have certain things checked. I mean, I, I mean, Don, when's the last time you actually had a physical that that did not pertain to say MMA or something of, of that nature? I don't know, partner. I don't know. Yeah. Well, so, well again, with the, same with me. I, there was a point in time that you had to get one every, right. I think, like almost every 60 days because if it's more than 60 days out, it was no good. So there would be times when I'd, I'd get, you know, maybe five or six physicals a year. So, yeah, again, but that was the basic uh, stuff, whether that was for MMA or for professional wrestling, depending on the state and stuff like that. You know, but they always did the uh, ba- the basic physical checking your blood work, make certain you don't have no HIV, Hep B, Hep C, yeah. and then checking your uh, heart and things of that nature. They always want to make sure that you're healthy enough so you can go out there and get beat up. You exactly. know, that's all. Out there dying in the ring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it, that that was just, just going through all this. It, it was not exactly what I call a fun experience because you know, because I did not have a primary physician. Then I had to go get a primary, mm-hmm. and now and and now and then as I go in to, to, to go in to see the primary doctor, you know now you're getting this full physical, and they're 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 questioning as to why you're here, and I'm like, well, because I was told I have to before I get this other violation type of an experience happening, I have to go and let someone else violate me in a different direction here right now. So it's kind of like going, that's where two wrongs don't make a right. <laughs> None of these, no. And, and 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 I simply knew that, as far as I knew, I was okay to go. And it's like going, well, okay, but you know, you gotta be for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah, okay, yeah. But I think I've been rather uncomfortable for the doctor, though, too. So <laughs> that's all that mattered. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I want to get your guys' opinion on um. What's going on in Texas right now on the border with um, 
So Texas putting up all their barbed wire, you know, to, to shut well, down. I, 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 that, that, that's an easy one to, to simply to assess. You yeah. have citizens, you have citizens now doing the right thing because our government will not. That's yeah. pretty much cut and dry. I mean, we could say all the other things that we want to say in here right now, but the bottom line is our government is not doing their job and they're allowing all types of people to come in that are not being uh, vetted one way or the other to know where they're going to go. Why should they just simply just roam around? I mean, before you had to simply know that they did have a destination that they're headed to, whether it was some type of a relationship or a family or something of that nature, they weren't just going to come in and just wander, wander, wander. So, and then to see. They can choose what house they want to break into. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you just got to look at, it's like, uh, you're you're seeing that a lot of the border towns, they have, their crime rate has risen quite a bit, hasn't oh, yeah. it? Oh, yeah. I, now, gee, uh, I'm just going to go out there on a limb here and speculate. Does one have something to do with the other? Hmm. I, I just, oh, I, you know, if, if I had a democratic <laughs> mind, I would never think that way. Of course, I'd be probably maybe more concerned about, you know, uh, what color I want to color my hair today, pink, yeah. purple, <laughs> red, blue, you know, whatever. How not to hurt somebody's feelings, yes. Yeah, no, again, I, I, that's where I feel. Pe some, some people just need to start having some real conversations and not worry about each other's nouns, pronouns, or anything that's in nature. Just, you know, don't give two shits what you are. That's one of the, the rights that you have in the United States. You that's know? right. That's something that the government should not be involved with, that bullshit. Yeah, exactly so, right. You have to follow pro But, you know, it's the people's right to form a militia, the people's militia. And so they have the right to go down there and put the barbed wire up, you know, raise well, their... Well, I mean, it, Don, I mean, it's, it's, I look at this way. Guns. My, 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 uh, my parents had... Property I had I had a hundred twenty acre property, and we always had no trespassing signs that were put on the border perimeters because we did not want to have to have other hunters or whatever mm. come on to our property. Because mm. Lord have mercy if they should come on your property and one of them accidentally right. shoots the other, you're liable for their stupidity. Which I'm thinking, Falls down, yeah. whoa! Once again. Does that make sense to you or I or Tony? Right. No. No, we come on there, fuck but, on your property and sue you. And like I, the other day, I was shit. It was in the morning, uh, having breakfast or something. I look out my kitchen window. There's some fucking old broad out there with her dog in my yard, my backyard. <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell is this? I walk out there as I was trying to help you. I almost wondered how she got got in there because I mean, you you you're, you're pretty well fenced in there, pretty yeah. good. So, well, the gate was open apparently. It's just something oh. around the gate, uh, and um, I said, "Can I help you?" Oh no, I just walking around looking, taking a look. This is my house, honey. <laughs> that's, that's a nice, that's a nice looking big dog you got there. <laughs> you know, but uh, wow. Yeah, she's like, oh, okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll go, you know, like, it was shocking to her. Like, yeah. I'm yeah, so I was like, I was like, you put, put her out at an inconvenience that, you know, you, that the fact that you even questioned her yeah. Yeah. whereabouts and, you know. She's like, what are you but, doing here, sir? I'm just looking around. <laughs> Why are you in your house right now? Didn't you know this is my yeah. to walk around your, your yard? So the Supreme Court. Um, already put an order to say to take down the razor wire, right? Texas said, fuck you. Yeah, yeah, and Texas, yeah, again, Texas stand up and be like, fuck you, we're gonna do what we want, which again, they should have the right. We all should have the our first of all, our borders should be secure. Well, Texas does have the right because before they joined the union, they they had their own, they were their own country, you know, yeah, and then uh, so they had their own constitution, and if they were ever annexed or what have you uh become part of another country she, they had the right to succeed from that country if they wanted it and so you know they can tell anybody they want to to piss off i mean hell they got water ports so you know they have the for the trade the water trade you know they got, yep. I mean, you know i don't know if, if the u.s government would block off 
you know, the um, interstates going in and out of Texas, or, or, you know, and make everybody fly around Texas and won't let, won't let Texas fly in and out or what have you, you know. I mean, it'd be a major clusterfuck yeah. for them to try all that, but I'm sure, I'm sure they would try. Yep. Well, again, I, I, I fully support what they're doing and because they're doing the right thing. And it's yeah. questioning questioning our so-called government anymore, especially even our, our legal system anymore, oh. to where it's uh, things are getting out of control. Um, I guess some people will use a word like weaponized, mm -hmm. you know? So it's kind of like going, uh, um, it's just, you know, is it right? Nope. Yeah. It's Lady not. justice is no longer blind, you know? No. I mean, yeah, it's, it's kind of like when I think for somebody, she's pulling it out down to take a little peek, see there. No, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's. Yeah. She's keeping an eye on you. Like, <laughs> Like 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 Big Brother is, you know. <laughs> oh, I actually thought it was maybe like you're gonna you could throw her into but say like one of your exes or something like that. Why are you just throwing my night down? Thank you. Okay, then then then, then you can you can start to sing one of those Willie Nelson specials. All my exes live in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I I don't mean to be laughing at your uh, you know. Yeah. It'd be better if all my exes were buried in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you didn't say that out loud. Then. Did you? Not, not... <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. Hmm. I guess you 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 got to stop all that free will. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll learn to stifle your feelings. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah, that's yeah, right. You can't speak concern, out. Yes. Let everybody the concern, man. concern yourself with everybody else before yourself. Yes. Yeah. I tell you what, Donald, Donald Trump never looked so fit there. Man, so, he's looking buff, ain't he? I'll tell you what. Maybe Jammer. He was about to get out his ab routine. I I only have one, <laughs> one, one, one ab anymore. So you know, if I if I bend over the right way, I could make it. I could make a nice crease line. Give show you two. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> big old. All right. What do, what other kind of fan questions or or topics? Here we can go. We... This one's for it says. Uh... Hi, Don. My name is Bradley. I'm a massive fan. Uh, you and Dan are both legends. So this question is for Don. What's your favorite caliber um, and round to hunt with? And what's your favorite weapon? Thank you for the entertainment. You guys are awesome. Love the show. Favorite caliber is a 50 cal. Oh, is it, Sir? Is it going to depend on what you're hunting? I mean, I, I mean, I mean yes. a 50 oh, kill yeah. might, might tear up a squirrel pretty good. So yeah. it's kind of cool, you know. So, so it kind of depends on what you're hunting now. Because, yes, 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 yes. because Don, I or mean, what you want I, I, won't bra I, I won't brag, but uh, you've got, uh, you've got a nice arsenal there. So it's kind of going, yeah. So you've got something for a little bit of everything. Yeah. Every which occasion. Is, yes. 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 <laughs> I like, I, I got a couple of 50 caliber uh, Desert Eagle handguns, you know, it's, I really love and um then uh you know like I got a couple three oh eights that are really great. Um my my buddy uh Ray Ray Care um sent me a, a three oh eight rifle from um Watchtower a rifle company, uh gun gunworks. And uh, that thing is, it's light as a feather, but man, I think I'll reach out and touch somebody. And I also have one from Patriot Ordnance Factory here in Arizona, um, up there in Phoenix. And they gave me a nice one about shit, 15 years ago, I think it was. And that thing is a, that thing is a hell of a, a shooter, too. What, uh, well, let me, let me uh, put you a spot there. When's the last time that you've gone hunting and what, and if so, what, what was it that you're hunting? I haven't hunted in a decade because my back. Okay. Yeah. All right. That was the last time it was um, for elk. Yeah. Oh, elk. Wow. Okay. That, that's people don't have understand how big an elk is. I mean, there it's a uh, mm. huge. No, I'm a liar. I'm a liar. I went, um, um, that was the last time I did uh, successful here in Arizona. But I also, Cal Worsham used to take me, um, Pig hunting, wild wild pig hunting up up there in California, Northern California. Yeah, wild, wild going after the wild boars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. those things. Yeah. 
they were fun to hunt. They were fun to hunt. People don't realize how big a oh, boar man. could get, especially, I mean, they, they might have been domesticated at one point in time, but, uh, you know, get out there in the wild, the, the yeah. tusks that start to grow, and they'll get up to two, three hundred pounds or more. Yeah, and, they, and they're fast, too. Yeah, cow, yeah. cow got a 350-pounder one time, man, and he said that was average up there. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, to eat? I mean, did, 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 did they do it? Does he eat his good cattle? Eat. Yeah, they're good eating. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, Not like Javelina. Javelina is just a big rat. You know, yeah, no. they don't have any fat on them. So they're just, it's like eating cardboard. It's dog treats. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, okay. Because I know I've, I've seen a lot of, you know, uh, pig ears and stuff like that, chew toys for, for yeah. dogs, that kind of thing. So, yeah, I, I get it. But the, yeah, the wild boars are real. The Russian, wild Russian boars, they're, they're really good at eating. What's yeah, your, have one charge so what's your favorite you like elk oh, to eat or what's your favorite oh, elk yeah, game elk. to eat elk definitely elk because there's, uh, there's plenty of it you know yeah, it's <laughs> good it's really good you can you can prepare elk really good too yeah it's tasty yeah and like i said there's you know you mix it with some pig if, if you want you there know, you go and you get put some fat into it yep have um what's the most exotic thing i know you spent a lot of time in japan yeah. What's the most exotic thing you think you've ever eaten? Mm -hmm. Well, we ate some person one time, you know, a human being. Oh yeah, yeah. What, well, well, like their butt? <laughs> no, so I'm just the butt with you. You fucking freak. It's getting weird. <laughs> yeah, Dad, I I can't. Uh, you know, people that you Rump hang rose. out there with that times, I gotta question it. <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah. So seriously about you. So you actually, you're serious. You actually ate some human being. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't fucking believe you, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh it's like, like the toe or what? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, see, seriously, you got though. some, you got some swamp land. You want to sell too, don't you? They're done. <laughs> no, yeah, octopus, squid. Um, you ever had monkey brands? I heard that's something yeah, over there that was it. really like delicacy over there. Had the, uh, uh, Kobe beef over there, it's real good. Yeah, and had, had the, well, that's quite that's quite the delicacy, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. that was great. What about insects? Any kind of no, no? insects? No, what's the uh, what's the new beef here? Um, that's um, how what is it called? What well, a wagyu. wagyu, yeah, wagyu, wagyu. Yeah. yeah, that's good stuff too. Yeah, that stuff, yeah, it's so expensive. Yeah, I'm marveling in that is. Same. Well, when I was down there in Columbia, I met a guy. Um, crap, now I can't remember his name. Um, he used to play in the NFL, and uh, he he raises the Wagyu state beef. Oh yeah, I bet he yeah. makes a killing. Yeah. And how long does that take? I wonder. I don't know. Or the Try, process of I that. Him up a few times, get him on the show. He won't answer the phone. <laughs> so you made a good impression, I see. Yeah. <laughs> What, you. what what about what about you, Dan? What's the most exotic thing you've eaten? No, I mean you 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 touched base on there. I mean being being in Japan, I mean it, I, I've eaten more seafood and certain things that I had not a clue. But uh, I simply just look around and think, well, they're all chowed down. Not gonna kill me. Didn't kill them. Won't kill me. Chow down. Mm -hmm. But then you know, but you know, but Japan would be just one place. But then going to other countries through my amateur wrestling career. Um, same, same, uh, there. I mean, you, you don't know, you know, you'd be in a country like Turkey or something like that, and they're putting out different things, and again, they're they're eating that way, and and you don't have a clue as to what it, what it is. Like so it's like, <laughs> I mean, I, I yeah, I'll, I'll simply say that, uh, I, I think sometimes being a wrestler and cutting weight, you learn to appreciate almost any kind of food as long as you can eat it, right? I think I had horse. When I was over there, wasn't real thrilled about that. You know. <laughs> but but uh, you didn't really know though at at the time though, right? Right. Didn't yeah, know. I mean, because if you didn't know onto it, I mean, it, it's uh, I've heard you know good things about about it one way or the other. So I mean, but you know, I can I understand your sentiments there. What so, about what about Rocky Mount Rocky Mountain oysters? Yeah, I've had those back when I was at Okie State. But UK um is like raw beef um from the Korean barbecues. That's really good stuff. We used to, I think I was over there for a couple of years before I tried it. 
And I was like, for the first two years, and you people are nuts eating raw meat. And then when I finally got it, I was like, man, I've been missing out. <laughs> that's the best. That's the best thing you can get at a Korean restaurant in the UK. Yeah, no, it's uh, no, just like you said, Don, just uh, traveling around to different cultures and uh, just trying things that they just take for granted. You know, I mean, Tony, I, I actually have had different types of insects like grasshoppers and stuff like that. I've, I've had them to me. It's like what just kind of reminded me of uh, Captain Crunch. I mean, you just <laughs> hardest part is when you, you have to you simply look at it, the fact that it's like, okay, it wasn't alive at the time. I, I mean, it's not like I'm taking, throwing live ones in, but uh well, that, be, I've read there's lots of actually nutrition and stuff in yeah. insects. I've had I've had some live or some seafood that was alive at a sushi bar, you know, there in uh. in, in Japan. Yeah, it's wiggling around. You know, like, wow. Well, yeah, th that is one of the, the tough things because at, at the same type of experience, it being in Japan and they're they're filleting a fish mm -hmm. and the fish's mouth is still yeah, <laughs> kind of like going. You know, stop looking at me while I'm eating you, okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> give me, give me, a, give me a, a conscious hero, yeah. yeah. You go by one of those uh, food stores and they get the big uh, aquarium in the window and you got half an eel flowing around, <laughs> swimming around you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, but, but it's... It. Uh, but again. Yeah, you know, I'll say that, the, the, you know, the Japanese people, well, again, they're, they're, they have a very... But yeah, they got a great culture, and and the fact that they don't, you just don't see garbage That's waste yeah, out. I mean, they're, they're very very clean people. They're you don't see the graffiti uh, people out there, I mean, and they, they may not have they much, have they have but respect. they're but they're sweeping their their sidewalks, they're picking it up, and yeah, you know, like I said, there's no graffiti and there's no trash being thrown around. They're they're really tidy uh, people, and that's where. Well, they have uh, so, other people, you know, and there's not the only ones on the planet, you know. Right. Well, they, but that's what I, I, I see that a lot of people can, to, can take something away from a country like that. For the fact that you, you may not have much, but you'll have to live like a slob and you have to have garbage all around your front yard, stuff like that. There's still take a little pride in yourself, take a little pride in, in, in your household. Just you may not. It may not be painted perfectly and stuff like that, but at least you don't have a bunch of tin cans of garbage floating around your, your front yard or something like that. So, so he just says over 19 billion chickens are eaten a year. Billion? Billion. Yeah, some well, of them. That's, that's, that's where the I'll, I'll say some of the delicacies mm. is chicken feet in Japan. And I might go on, I don't think I've ever had a chicken foot. That I'm aware of over there. Is, is that just on the Severn property? In yeah, yeah, that's for day. that's that's one trip to the buffet line for Mister Severn. <laughs> I can't say nothing there because I'm guilty as charged about that buffet line. So <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. I've seen it firsthand. <laughs> um, uh, they, but octopus, um, actually, over two billion. They're saying over two billion right. octopus octopuses. <laughs> I I know. Just joking. And then over a hundred, a hundred million sharks. That's wow. yeah, that's that's insane. Now about that, you know, eating that octopus, or you know, it sticks to your ribs, literally. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Che cheesy lines, cheesy one liners there. There you go. <laughs> so, UFC um, three hundred is coming up, and. Um, they announced one of the fights is going to be after two nights. Um, well, they're going to try something different this year and do it before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you know, it's a few pay per views away still. Severance confused. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they're they're wondering if Dan, they want to know if Dan would um want to come back and join fight for the three hundredth uh, event. They're going to have a bunch of chickens in there. See how many you can eat. You catch them, you can eat them, man. <laughs> Oh, he'll get them. Yeah, so, well, yeah, that's for say, huh? Am so I allowed, yeah. okay? Am I allowed to wear my fanny pack in there? <laughs> <laughs> How else would they yeah. recognize you? you uh, that way, I can, I can come up with the hooking mechanism. Pack. Just keep hooking them out to my the old fanny pack band <laughs> on the, the waist there. There you go. So, so Justin Gaethje is gonna fight Max Holloway. They think it's gonna be for the 
BMF belt. Do you what do you think? Do you think that Justin should be fighting for the light heavyweight belt? Or do you think that this is just another gimmick fight? Or or just or you think Max deserves to be able to fight like to fight Justin here at the end of his career? Is Justin the light heavy or is he middle? Um I think they're light, uh, lightweight. Like, yeah, just, Justin. I think, you, I think you, I might have said heavy. You're right. Yeah, lightweight. yeah. Lightweight. yeah just, I mean, you gotta look at Justin has has won so many, as I should say, been involved in so many fight of the night. Yeah. Uh, matches. Pretty much so he's been in, right? <laughs> yeah, he, he. I think. Yeah, he I think, has. I do believe he has been in, in like more fight, fight of the night type of bonuses situations than anybody else. Though it, it takes two to tangle, so obviously. Everyone that he went against, but the the the, the common de denominator is just to be in there and you know stand in there. I think he watched too many of Don Fry's matches. Is what was happening right there. Yeah, and he's not. <laughs> <laughs> Except the the bad part is they didn't have bonus bonuses at that time, so you were sitting they just giving all that all that away for free. Uh, you know what they could have my uh, the agents <laughs> I had could have stolen. Also, <laughs> that I don't know. I'm not you got to watch out about the, some of those mustachio men that you hang yeah. out with there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I think Justin's going to hurt him. I don't think that's, I don't think Max deserves to take that. And he, like I said, again, he has no quit in him. I think Justin's just going to, I don't, he's, I don't know if Max can get knocked out, you know, and like he's, I've seen people try to. And the beating he takes is insane. Well, that's one of the things about the fight game. You just never know what happens because it, it, there's always just that, that lucky punch, that lucky kick, kick, that lucky knee, elbow that gets uh, – it, it all boils down to that setup or the fact that your opponent lets their guard down or you let your guard down for that, that split second, and that's all it takes to change the entire complexity of a match. Well, you look at most of these fighters – once they take that step backwards, their chin goes up, you know, I mean, right away. You know, that's the time to whack them. See, I, I'll take your word for it because I wasn't the, the, the whacker <laughs> type. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> well, you need, you need extension on your arms that, that go beyond. 90, 90 degrees, you know. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I'm still looking for, I'm still looking for the clinches that the takedowns. Okay, yeah. so, so I got a fan question for for both of you. They want to know. Oh, perfect. Next question. Who do you think was the one of the best workers in professional wrestling? Well, I mean, there, there's a lot of different people that could probably, you know, yeah, fulfill that. That uh, let's give give us like, like a top five. The Brooklyn Brawler, great worker. He, he never gave him a yeah. He never got the push. Never got anything. Yeah, but he put everybody over. He made everyone look yeah. great. Like <laughs> yeah, like Bret Hart. But but, but, but that's the same way, like like an Al, an Al Snow or Al Al Sarvin, You know, yeah. he basically was uh, just one of those kind of guys that always made everyone else look good. So again, there's there's some people that you know, just like we were saying about the the Brooklyn Brawler, mm -hmm. their job is to make everybody else shine, right? And they do a good they do a good job at doing that. So they it's the fact that they're not only they're doing their job, they're doing half of your job there for you, yeah, yeah, just to make you look good. But then you also had the Brooklyn Brawler that he's he's played a he's portrayed a couple different characters as well. Mm -hmm. You might go out there as Doink the Clown, or he might go out there as Matt Bord, or, you know. Yeah. No, he played a lot. Bruno Sammartino, the late Bruno, the late Terry Funk. And Terry was great, man. Was yeah. Fantastic. Well, again, you, you you picked out two different people from two different eras that uh, they, uh, they 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 made their mark. They had, they, they were, fa they were uh, a fan's favorite, you know. I mean, I mean, Funk could work, you know, scientific matches, but then he he could brawl these hardcore yeah, yeah. matches and, and go off the top of cages and stuff like that. They go at ages that I would never think of doing something like that at. No Mick, way. Mick Foley's a great worker, you know. Shit. Yeah, there's so there's so many people that are deserving of uh Stone Cold of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's a really hard yeah, hard one. That's a hard one. Yeah, but just to see, yeah, there's so been and nowadays 
it seems to be different. It's like there's no they don't tell a story anymore. It's just about how many flips they can do. Yeah. How many yeah. Uh, who yeah, can okay, jump off the off the top rope the farthest. There's more acrobatics to this. Yeah. There's no storyline. No, and the shit is the shit talking was so good. Mm-hmm. That, you know, that was such a good thing you looked forward to to follow the the, the build up to the pay per view. Harley Grace, you know, Dusty Rhodes, you know, Harley Harley Grace, great. Yeah. yeah, those those are a couple classic names that you pulled out. Especially look at Dusty Rhodes was like the common man. He always appealed to the common man. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Son of a plumber or something like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Isn't it great how Vince tried to put him in polka dots thinking it would sink him? And yeah. instead he just owned it and yeah. he made he made black he made and yellow him. polka dots famous. Yep. Yep. They tried to ruin him and he's over. Yep. Too good. Yeah, you can't, you can't. Some people just got it. Yeah, he was awesome. Oh, definitely. Boom. Well, Mr. Severin was, you know, I mean, yeah, he had a strap. You still have that strap, right? The NWA belt. Yes, sir. Yeah, see. That, yeah. World Heavyweight Champions. Yep. Yep. Yeah. One of the, and that goes back to, you know, in my opinion, Mr. Severin's the original Suplex City. You know, they get what they, they were the Brock well, later. I'll, I'll say that uh, the, the being a part of the NWA, especially when I was being approached by it. I think we've we've talked about this once before, but that's where, you know, the fact that uh, I go down to Smoky Mount Wrestling and uh, to do a match with uh, Chris Candido at the time and to to be allowed to win. I mean, uh, that's where Jim Cornette, that that was his territory. I never met Jim Cornette at that point in time. So talk about a leap of of faith to me, but... uh, if you were to talk to Jim about professional wrestling, he's so passionate about it, but he likes to make sense about it as well. You can, if you just spoke to him just for a few minutes, you would start to see that that inner child that fell in love with professional wrestling all those decades earlier. So, yeah. well, Kurt Angle was another great one. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, Kurt- again, Kurt Kurt Angle comes from an amateur wrestling background professional wrestler but uh you know a phenomenal athlete that uh he's, you know ends up winning athlete. the gold medal with a broken neck yeah. so he, that's well, the way wrestled. people can do something to, that's no. it's just incredible feats you know, he wrestled injured so much throughout well you don't want to you know you you lose you leave you lose your spot Some, yeah. somebody's going to take it you know right. so you got to try to yeah. get out there as much as possible i'm sure you guys know yeah well that that, that is one of the things about professional wrestling it's uh Anybody, anybody can and win in professional wrestling. And sometimes I don't know if uh, the consideration is taken into account for some athletes. Uh, you know, maybe for the aging athlete. You know, th- there does come a point in time when you have to move on. Uh, begrudgingly, you have to move on, and that's when you have to start doing more and more of what they refer to as the honors. Job. You had to get the pass took the torch out to the the younger youth and and that's uh that's that I think that that's hard when it comes to the ego I mean one of the classic ones would have been Shawn Michaels versus Ric Flair mm-hmm. where even when Michaels was about to do the the super kick right there oh, he even uh yeah. like he basically apologizes as as he's Get yeah. ready to do it, and but he also thanks Ric Flair all in that same breath, you know. So, yeah, and then you can see after he, I pinned him. You know, I wonder what he said to him. You see him laying on top of him. Just, yeah, uh, yeah, and then they're having a conversation because it, it's that's what is one of those moments. I mean, it's the same way, and when you look at the ten count, uh, when they do the 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 ten count bet with the bell. You know, for a uh, wrestler that has fallen, That's you know, the wrestlers that. will all come out there, line up around, around the outside of the ring, and then they'll do the uh, the ten the ten count salute to that uh, fallen wrestler. Yeah. So, those are yeah, it, it's a sad ordeal that you're witnessing, but the sheer fact that they do pay tribute to their fallen uh, workers brothers or sisters in, in that industry that uh, 
are no longer with them. And I mean, but on an, on an annual basis, there are quite a number of professors that pass each each year, and it's not usually due to, I'd say, like to normal natural situation. Yeah, yeah. that not, that, that, not normally age. natural causes. I mean, it's you know, so it's just one of those industries that uh, there's a lot more chemicals involved in and. Uh, well, it's a rough life, you know. It's yeah, rough. it is. Well, again, it just, you know, I'm trying to think the program, I think it was called 300, but it just talked about being on the road, like, or, or and competing 300 days out of the out of the year. Yeah, that doesn't leave much time for being at home. No, for a relationship, yeah. Yeah. You know, or for to recover. Yeah. No, I can it just, you know, I mean, well, I mean, Don, you've, you've lived that life there to where you wake up in the morning and you just kind of wonder, it's like, okay, yeah. Where am I at and what is my function today? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where I am. <laughs> so, so another thing about this, so UFC 300, this guy, Jim Miller has fought in, he fought in UFC 100, 200. Now he's going to fight in, in UFC 300. <laughs> how, how old is old Jim Mil Miller here then? Uh, let's see. He was born in 83. So when's him 40? Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty crazy. Just a just a spry young buck. He's got time for all kinds of more matches, right, Don? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. He's fifty five and thirty seven. This is the MMA record. What weight is he? Um, let's see here. Uh, lightweight. Mm. Well, that's still challenging. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Why well, see? There you go. That's the fight everybody wants to see. I come back to UFC three hundred. That's it. So, so on that note, um, I think <laughs> we're still getting get the Holly Holm fight. Huh? Don just wants to wrestle with Holly Holm somewhere. <laughs> I think Don. I think she could take you. Well, we're not, we're not going to fight back. You can't. What is you can't you can't beat the willing. I'm going to enjoy that. <laughs> so. So speaking of Don um, fighting again, they um, said it's okay to box. Um, men can box in the Olympics against women. So we're Don's gonna get that. Did, did they? Uh, did they just? Did they just come out with this, Tony? Um, no, no. It, yeah, they just. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's announced that it's it's official now. It's yeah, they just uh, made it official that it can happen. Whole world lost its fucking mind. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna say that, even, that even, I don't even, think very much of, of USA boxing here right now. And if they're going to say something like that, I think they've been hit in the head one too many times to even make boxing. a comment. Yeah, and then the International Olympic Committee, they're all full of assholes, you know, yeah. like idiots. You know, she's it's gonna get somebody killed. And you know Of course they will. And then they, they, they then all of them that are on the board should get sued. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, it's it's because they're the ones that all give you, oh, it's okay to do, no problem. Oh, yeah, no, there's a problem with that. that yeah. To me, it's like have a backbone, make a stand, and do the right thing. You don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. Well, you know, you know yeah. what's going to happen? This this going to happen this year. Someone's going to get hurt, or or a, a man's going to win a gold medal from a woman that deserves it. You know, it's fucking bullshit. Well, I think a number of those occasions have already taken place between oh, you're women's right. weightlifting, powerlifting. You got women's Track swimming. Field. I see, yeah, because I, yeah, I remember that it's like a, there was a Jamaican dude who apparently couldn't make the, you know, the men's team, and he we were watching it, and we were like, "What? So that's a guy? No way, that's a dude!" And then they started running, and yeah, that was a guy. And even the announcer made a comment, and I think that he got in trouble for saying something, but it's like it's the truth. Like you can't, you shouldn't be able to do that. Yeah, the fact the fact that someone who was not of that persuasion makes a comment which is truthful and gets yeah. punished for making a truthful statement. Yeah. Wow, that's uh, that's wrong. They should let Caitlyn Jenner uh, commentate that event. You know? Oh, I I, I love it because, like I said, the uh, you know. Caitlin, aka Bruce, uh, you know, he calls it straight down the line. I mean, he he he, he chose his path, but uh, he at least uh, makes 
sensible comments like uh, that uh, should uh, should uh, women be involved in uh, men's athletics? Nope. Oh no, yeah, he he's very vocal about that. Yeah. Yeah. So there was a a boys a men's soccer team that played like the women's like a, a US yeah, yeah. A female state, team. Texas state yeah. just a state championship team. Yeah. Or, or a regional team or something like that. Yeah. 15 year old boys. Yeah. yeah. Beat it was like 12 to zero at halftime. <laughs> <laughs> and they I mean and they were just they were just out there toying around the guys were and these guys just and the girls are talking shit before it's like these guys are good women's soccer is gonna kick ass. These boys are gonna see what's coming to them. Show them how women play sports. <laughs> I told you when I got fired by uh Oh yeah. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> for speaking the truth, yeah. you know, for told, yeah. told a couple of women, well, women are as strong as men. They got upset and complained, you know. Boss says, Yeah, we can't have that. <laughs> oh, you can't have the truth? Oh, that's right. You're not allowed to speak the truth in America. Forgot. Because this is we have this is freedom. Yeah. Yep. Wait, well, now. Yeah. So that one that's, there, that's so there's this there's this funny video I saw this girl complaining about so called men jobs in America how they um make more money you know and there she was and she, her her example was um iron workers concrete layers electricians um you know like she says these are men uh, careers right. you know anybody I I you know I do low, low voltage electrician work and you know, data infrastructure and there's, I see electricians out there, women working on the field, they get paid exactly what we do. It's about, and then that's what you tell the, and the girl's uh, response was, I don't want to do those jobs, but I want to get paid the same for being a hairdresser and doing these things that she says that are so-called female jobs. It's like, no, those are just jobs. You know, just you, her, her just saying that men get paid more in their field of work. It's like, yeah, well, again, we would we, use those couple examples like like a uh, concrete, uh, uh, some of this pouring concrete slabs. That is hard work. Yeah, it, no, it's hard work. You know, to me, it's like going, I don't even want to do that kind of work. I've done it in the past. Did I enjoy doing it? No, but uh, my father had that threat of a boot up my ass, so I did not have a choice in the matter. <laughs> you'd, have, now, you'd, have been, yeah. you'd have rather been cutting hair that day. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, you know, exactly. <laughs> so it's uh, give me no, a, there, there's me. there are certain professions that uh, you, it is you. I mean, if you're a female that can handle that kind of work, right? Hey, oh yeah, you can. God, do, God bless you. Yeah, uh, no to me, it's like going you're not allowed. And actually, I'll, I'll, this girl that she's an electrician, I see her on the job site a lot. Her boxes, like her, her when she's done. They're the they, they they look the best. <laughs> Shut the yeah, box. she, her boxes lit, lit is immaculate. Let me tell you, every I stare at it all day long. <laughs> Many electricians. Yeah, I've ever seen. I, I like to just look, stare at her box all day. <laughs> but but women. But my point is too is not it's not a male. Anybody can do that. Anybody can do that job, and they're going to get paid the same point, right. the same amount. It's not just because you're a male doing that job or a few, same with it. Like now, now back, it used to be, Oh, you're a male nurse. Like now it's just, you're a nurse. And, but they, they never had a difference for a male nurse or a woman's nurse, you know, and it's like, it's, or a male doctor or a female doctor. Well, maybe there are in some, you know, in some industries, but for the most part, well, good. Look, you, you, you came up with a nice specific area. Cause you gotta look at a lot of say retirement homes, that have any kind of like a medical staff on there, there's a lot of times you have to be able to help people in and out of beds, right. bathrooms, the whole nine yards. Now, is a petite little dewdrop of an individual, irregardless of sex, going to get the job done, or something a little bit more with a little bit, uh, you know, backbone, meat and potatoes on them, going to get the job done better? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're going to want someone that can carry that weight. That that weight. exactly. So that's where again, I get nothing about uh, being sexist. It's kind of like going, you know, you, you just simply know that Capability. in certain jobs, it does require a certain 
certain physical attribute type traits to have. You, I mean, I, it's, that, that could be easy for, let's say, an amputee no. to be out there trying to do that. You know, so again, you can't say it's racist or something like that because, you know, you got two arms and I only have one. Yeah. <laughs> so, you call somebody else in to help me. Yeah. yeah. Borrow their arm. <laughs> So, so you're going to start training for the Olympics, Don? The low jump. Oh. <laughs> I think, I think Dan could win boxing. I think he could take out some girls and, you know, we know Dan. Tony, you got me confused with other oh. mustache men that, that I'm just saying, able I'm to keep saying. their hands up here for longer than, you know, five or 10 seconds. It's kind of like when my, my start here, like they drop my down because I'm trying to shoot in. So, yeah. <laughs> Just pretend like you're hitting a pinata with the candy, you know. <laughs> Act like they're trying to get in your fanny pack, Dan. That won't happen. I got that little pinata right there, a little bag of candy here right now. So <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny that you should stuff. say that there, Don. <laughs> it's you know, sometimes when you hear a little rattle taking place, it's kind of like oh, and you wonder what I'm up to. Yeah, there you know. The the bell rings. You you search a lot of certain salary. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's because I I can't have my I can't have my sugar get out of balance. You know that's what, that's what it is. Yeah, it's got to kind of sugar balance. Yeah, dangerous. Yes. So what other topics can we jump into here real quick until we could? Yeah. We're, so yeah, we're getting pretty close here. We're wrapping it up. We almost got about an hour in. Um, but. I just want to say, I just started watching this, the 1883. You heard of that? The one that's like the, one of the spinoffs from Yellowstone. I recommend you watching it, Don. And I know, I know Dan watches a lot of TV. So, but if you ever. Well, get... only, only when I, I've been to death, you know, it's, it's raining a great deal. I've got my box of bonbons and stuff like that, you know, and especially if I watch a lot of these really sensitive type, I got to have a couple of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I've been get in touch with my 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 feminine side. Yeah, so there you go. Instead of, instead of having perfume scented um, uh, wipes, he has chocolate scented wipes. So. <laughs> well, again, Beef, uh, not, not too much chocolate will ever ever get get off. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it pretty much it'll be internalized. You know, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say we need to get a message out to Taylor oh, Sheridan. Oh, no, uh, we got well, two yeah, we cowboys could, we, right here. For, here, uh, we could chat here a little about the fact that did we or did we not hit a a mile 50, marker? Yeah, uh, toxic yeah. masculinity finally, finally got to fifty thousand. Yeah, so again, that again, that, that, that's that's a nice. Oh. That, that, that's a nice mark that we had. We should uh, definitely thank the, uh, our our viewers for tuning in, and the biggest thing is to tune in, but then to also to like, subscribe, and to. You share know, with your friends. Share with uh, your other family and friends. That's a way to get the word out there. So that's what I'm going to say. We need to have everybody out there just have tell one friend, and that could double our subscribers in one day. Well, I think. Uh, I think not even of, that. We also have YouTube does not like us out there. So that's because you're Mexican. <laughs> well, I mean, I got well, two. That's what, I got what, two what white guys bossing me around all the time. So it's, everything's normal. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, that might be one thing that we simply say in the area right now is that we're, we're stopped, looking to... Up caps are off my truck. Well, you told you not to leave. Park there for too long. <laughs> so so anyway, trying to get back to uh, some, some business I had, we are <laughs> looking for other outlets for our podcast to other types of networks that, that uh, truly believe in Freedom of speech. Yeah. Yep. So just and and so another point is let's let's show YouTube that we that we're way better than they think. And who cares what they say? They can't shut us down. So we need everybody's help out there to prove YouTube wrong. And well, stop. Again, that that's where more, more of these uh more of our stuff that, that we can get that goes a little bit more viral. Make it a point to at least uh, those that uh, to agree with our side. I don't, you know, I don't want people that are simply just want to just sway just because they think that 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 Don Fry's got such a dashingly mustache. I'm just going to vote for him just because of that alone. Uh, you know, I'm, we're going to look for some 
something a little bit more in depth intellect. From us. <laughs> well, you know, we can at least say it. We don't really have to we don't have to adhere to it, but we'll at least make it sound like we're, you know. Dan's losing again, Glenn. Quinn, get him. <laughs> Dan needs sugar. <laughs> Eat a, well, piece of, eat a piece of candy, Dan. You're, you're wavering. <laughs> yeah. No, it's going to be time to feed the beast here afterwards. Yes. Thank you for watching another episode of Dan and Don's Toxic Masculinity. You better like, subscribe, and share, or I'm going to come to your house.